In this video, we will do a nodal analysis on a circuit using concepts of supernodes. Well, what exactly is a supernode? So let's take a look at this particular given circuit right here. We see general resistors, uh, a single current source of value 10 amps, uh, a voltage source that's 21 volts, and another voltage source that's 74 and a half volts right here. Let's focus on this voltage source right here. Now, you see that the voltage source, 21 volt, is between node A and B. There's nothing else here except for a voltage source along this two node. Now, another thing you can see about this voltage source as well that we've been doing in most nodal analysis problems we've seen so far is that the reference node is located far away from it. The reference node is neither node A nor node B. So this kind of voltage source, which lies between two important nodes, also called, called essential nodes, uh, and there's no other element there except for that voltage source, that kind of voltage source topology is called a super node. If you look at this particular voltage source, 74 and a half volt source, you see the exact same thing. Neither node C nor D is the reference node. Reference node is down here. So this voltage source is connected to node C. It is also connected to node D, but it is not a voltage, uh, uh, neither of which these, neither of these nodes are a reference node. We also see that there is nothing else between C and D except for the voltage source. There's no resistor or any other element. In such a case, this node is also called, this voltage source is also uh, called a super node. In fact, using super nodes simplifies circuit analysis quite a bit. So let's take this particular example with three different power supplies, two voltage source, a current source, it looks scary, but if we apply the concept of super node, this whole problem becomes very, very easy. So let's uh, tackle this problem. So let's work here. So uh, I identified, the first thing we did was identify the super nodes already. Uh, let's arbitrarily define the different directions of the current. Again, remember uh, the arbitrary definition of the directions of the current lead to the polarity of the voltage, or you can start out with the polarity of the voltage across the resistors, which would determine the direction of the current based on the passive sign convention. So uh, let's arbitrarily draw the currents here. So I've declared I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5. I chose these current directions. There's no reason why I chose them this way. I could have done it the other way. The, vo uh, the voltage at the different nodes would be then come out based on the direction of the current I chose. Now, we've identified that particular node as a super node 1 and that particular node as a super node 2. Now, super node 1, if you focus on super node 1, all you have between voltage node A and voltage node B is a 21 volt source. The plus side of the 21 volt source is on A side and the negative side of the 21 volt source is on the B side. So really, super node 1 is really telling us that the voltage at node A measured with reference to this reference node right here, VA minus VB is equal to 21 volts. So at super node 1, we can write down a voltage node expression, which is simply VA minus VB equals 21 volts. Let's move on to super node 2. At super node 2 again, the plus sign of the 74.5 volt source is towards C node and the negative sign is towards D node. So again, we look at this and see that v voltage at node C, which is on the plus side, minus the voltage at node D, which is on the minus side, should be equal to 74.5 volts. So at super node 2, we can simply write this uh, Boolean expression of V, uh, sorry, uh, expression of VC minus VD equals 74.5. Now that we've tackled these super nodes, all we have to do is apply Kirchhoff's current law at these super nodes again. So at super node, you basically assume that it's a big node. So assume that the voltage source doesn't exist anymore. So it's that big giant block. It acts as a single node, and all we do is apply Kirchhoff's current law at that node. 
ignore the voltage source and at super node when we apply concept super node we basically say the current going into the super node is the same should be the sum of the currents coming out of the super node. So again, Kirchhoff's current law holds true on the super node. So current coming into the super node, what's the current going into the super node? In this case, it looks like applying Kirchhoff's current at super node 1, we find that the total current coming into super node 1 is this 10 amp. I1 is going out of the super node, I2 is going out of the super node, and I5 is going out of the super node. So at super node 1, we can write down I1 plus I2 plus I5 is equal to 10. Now, I1 starts at A and ends at 0. So, VA minus 0 divided by 2 ohms. That's I1. Similarly, I2 is VB minus VC divided by 6. And I5 is VA minus VD divided by 3 ohms. And that is all equal to 10. So we have our voltage expression right here. So now let's separate the voltages in terms of VA, VB, VC, and if rearrange uh, everything like this. Okay. <clears throat> all right, now let's apply Kirchhoff's current law at super node 2. Same way, Kirchhoff's current law at super node 2 says the current going into super node 2, super current going into super node 2 is I2 and I5. Current coming out of super node 2 is I3 and I4. So I2 plus I5 should be equal to I3 plus I4. I2 is VB minus VC. I3 is VC minus 0 divided by 4. I4 uh, I3, uh, I4 is VD minus 0 divided by 1 ohm, and I5 is VA minus VD divided by 3 ohms. So we have this right here. Let's rearrange everything in this kind of manner where we have the coefficients of the voltages all written up. Okay. So now we have two expressions. Two, oh, I'm sorry, we have four expressions right here. One expression right here, VA, VV. Here's one for VC, VD. Here's one with VB, VC, VB to VD. And another one from VA through VD. So we have four different expressions, four different expressions, and four unknowns. So we can now so have, we have this kind of scenario. Let's write this as a matrix. So that we can write this matrix as following. Now that we have written this matrix, we can now use MATLAB to solve for our unknown voltage nodes VA, VB, VC, and VD. So let's go through that. So opening MATLAB, we can solve it in such a manner. So this matrix right here, I called it R. So I've entered it. So R equals 1. I can use a comma or a space for this. Minus 1, 0, 0. In order to add the second row, I add a semicolon. And one half plus one third, one sixth, negative one sixth, negative one third, semicolon to add the next row, one third, one sixth, negative one sixth, minus one fourth, and finally negative one third minus one. Uh, y, which is this uh, side right here, 21, semicolon, 74 and a half, semicolon 10, semicolon zero, the semicolons are there to separate out the rows, and I use inverse R times Y. Another way to solve this is also to say V equals R backslash Y in MATLAB. And if we do this, I get V, and that corresponds to the VA, VB, VC, and VD. So, so the concept of super node, just to recap, basically suggests that a super node is a, a situation like this where we have a voltage source between two essential nodes and there's no other element between those two nodes and none of these nodes A or B are a reference node. In order to solve for this first thing we do is write down the voltage expression VA minus VB is 21 volts VC minus VD is 74.5 volts the next thing we do is apply Kirchhoff's current law just like how we've been doing before this time we simply say that the current going into the super node is the current coming out of the super node and work in that manner.